What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Pro Photo USA and today, as you can see, we're in a little bit different place. And that's because last week you guys wanted to see some portraits in some tighter places. So I figured I would just move a whole bunch of stuff up to one of the rooms in my uh, home and do that. Like this is honestly probably the size of my living room whenever I lived in New York City. So we're gonna be able to do some cool stuff. And we're gonna talk through just ideas and things that may be concerning you with how you want to create in your tighter spaces. Um, and we can we can kind of talk through all that stuff. I'm gonna give you some little hacks that I made to simplify some stuff and some things you can do to e simplify even more. Uh, so let's just dive into it and talk about how we're set up. And that way you can kind of understand what we're doing. So for the most part, I've got a, a piece of blue seamless. I have it on a light stand that I'm using as a multi-purpose kind of setup. So if you can see here, let me actually move the stool for a second. So if you can see here, like I've got the light stand with a grip arm on it and it's holding my seamless. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I mean, you could literally, if you have the seamless and you just don't have the space, just cut a piece off, tape it to the wall and do it however you want to. For me, it's working dual purpose because it's holding my light, my background, but it's also giving me, I've super clamped a um, an A1X up here onto the light stand. So it's, I don't have an extra stand in the way because honestly, I don't really have the space to have an extra stand, especially because I have a ceiling fan up here, which I have running because it's it's hot outside today. So you got a ceiling fan up here, and if I tried to put a whole bunch of extra stuff up here, it's just not going to make a whole bunch of sense. So once again, the the dual purpose of this is allowing me to still have some space, getting my light where I want to for my hair light, and once again, just conserving floor space. Then what we did over here is I have a large umbrella, uh, just umbrella white, no diffuser. I wanted to try to keep it as simple as possible to and, and not overcomplicate too much stuff. So no diffusion panel. So we have another A1X firing into the, the large white umbrella, uh, which as you can, as you know from our past talks of umbrellas, the white umbrella is gonna give a real smooth uh, cast of light back towards the subject, which would be really, really beautiful. I also, I don't, you can't really see it in the shot, but this room actually has a bank of three windows, like literally right behind the cameras. It's, it's part of what's lighting me right now. So I'm actually gonna use those as my fill light. So we're gonna do it as a two light setup and then I'll add the third light just in case you wanna see what it looks like. Cause maybe you're only working with one light right now. So the nice thing is, is we're gonna utilize the windows as our fill, uh, fill light. And then we're going to just take the flash and just uh, add just that little bit of pop to expose the, the photo properly, but it should be really, really simple and really, really easy. It's in it, the cool thing is, is in a time where you may be inside a whole bunch, you can still make some cool portraits or you can, you can still do cool photography. Uh, if um, obviously if it's just you, um, I would, you know, go the self portrait route, which is always a really good idea. Uh, the upside for me is I have Kate here with me who, um, will be sitting in for these portraits. So, but like I said, it's really, really simple to make really pretty images just in a really tight space. You don't have to have, you know, ceiling wise in here for me, I'm, I'm working with eight foot ceilings. So, and then I, right in the middle of it, I've got a gigantic ceiling fan. So I don't have a ton of space just to, and it, and it also, if you couldn't tell from the other stuff, I'm in my son's room, like my, my, my toddler son, like his bed's right here. I've got a rocking bear hanging out right there. And, uh, and just other things, like there was a train in here while I go, or I guess Caitlin moved the train. But so you, we're creating, there's a rocking chair right there. So there's a, a dresser literally right behind the flash. So the space that I'm working in, honestly, is probably from umbrella to backdrop, I'm probably in a six by six little square. Uh, granted, it's taken up a little more space, obviously, because I have video cameras in here too. Um, and I, I brought up my, uh, my tethering stand, you don't have to do that. You put it on like a coffee table or something, uh, however you wanna do it. You don't even have to tether if you don't want to. I'm just doing it so once again, we can see everything that's going on. So really, really simple stuff. Let me see if you guys have any questions before we start kind of building this portrait and showing you how I would do it. Let's see, Joel, what's up, dude? Joseph Ford, what's happening, my man? Lockdown in Hudson Valley, I hope you're doing, I hope you're doing good, Anthony, I really, really do. Tim, what's up, dude, good morning. Jerome in Arizona. Oh, from Jerome, Arizona. What's up, Carrie? Awesome. Sweet. So let's see. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. So the way that I'm going to build this is very, very simple. I'm going to start off by getting my fill light where I want it to. 
and then I'm gonna add my lights in one by one. So it's a pretty simple process. I'm gonna have Kate come over here. I'm gonna put this chair right here. Okay. That should be pretty good. Sweet, so just so you guys understand, uh, oh, so you know what settings I'm at, let me jump here. So you can see my camera settings and stuff like that too. But you're also gonna see that stuff change as we start to dial it in. But for the most part, I'm gonna be shooting F8 uh, just to get some more detail in the shot. Some, it's, it's what I want out of it. So I'm going F8 with the shot. Um, then we're gonna do, um, we're gonna, I'll show you how we decide the shutter speed, especially because we're using um, the ambient light coming through these windows as my fill flash. So I'll show you how we decide our shutter speed. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pick our ISO. We're gonna go ahead and pick our shutter speed. I'm living at ISO 400. Uh, I'm, I'm at ISO 400 because I know that the shutter speed that I wanna be at uh, is not, how am I, I, I'm having a hard time saying what I'm trying to say. The shutter speed that I wanna be at, which is around 100th of a second, won't be possible at f8 without bumping my iso up a little bit so that was the smart way of saying it rather than the weird way that i was trying to convey the information so that being said we're going to do just that so i'm going to stamp right over here caitlin if you wouldn't mind assuming the stool the stool, the stool. <laughs> so pretty simple stuff let me back my camera up a touch for my framing Uh, take the stool, actually let me here, let me fix my tripod. My tripod's like bumping into a, a light stand. So take the stool back this way, just a touch. Yeah, that way. Perfect. Yeah, that should be good. Cool. Once again, guys, really tight quarters here. <laughs> so we're, we're doing it, we're doing it the real deal. So the first thing I'm gonna do, my air remote is off. So all I wanna do is I'm gonna use, I can see it with my live view, but you can't, so I'm gonna take a photo so you guys can actually see it. Hang on just one second, waiting for my live view to catch up. Oh, hang on a second, let me shut the camera down for a quick second. The live stuff's always fun because of technical difficulties. Here we yeah. go. Here we go. Now I've got it. So I'm gonna to start to slow my shutter speed down to get my fill light the way that I want it. So I'm gonna take a shot, no flash, just so you guys can see what I'm looking for with my fill flash. Ah, oh, and of course my, my trigger was still on. I apologize, so let me turn this off. So right here, Caitlin. So this is the shot that I'm getting with just the light coming from the windows. So I'm at uh, ISO 400, F8, 160th of a second, which is fine because we're not really moving too much, so it shouldn't be, it's 160th of a second isn't a big deal. And I'm on a tripod, so I don't have to worry about my jiggly hands uh, messing up the shot. So that's kind of, and, and this is a subjective thing too, so you can decide how much um, fill light you like or how much you don't want. So for this, I want the contrast to be relatively low in the shot. So I brought the, and if you wanna do it through like your metering mode, so like looking at Caitlin through my light meter, this is showing that I'm, hold on a second, let me. It's showing that I'm underexposing by two stops. So for me, for this shot, it's what I like. So I'm underexposing the shot by two stops from natural light. And so from here, I'm going to turn on my main light, which is an A1X through a white umbrella. I'm gonna take a TTL reading. It should get me in the ballpark. And then I'm just gonna scale it back. And this is, one of those things too, so I'm not, you know, I'm not clicking my meter and doing all that stuff. Real gritty, real, real scrappy. Just getting it done with what we got. So let's kick on the air remote. I know that I need to turn that hair light off or else it's gonna creep into the shot. So here we go. We're in TTL mode. Focus right on Caitlin. Three, two, one. This is pretty good. Right out of the jump, the, the TTL shot is pretty clean. It's probably a little bit more overexposed than I would like it to be. So I'm gonna actually jump over into manual mode and I'm going to bring that down probably about a half a stop and that'll probably make me a very happy camper. So we go right back here, Caitlin. Three, two, 
Oh, let me adjust my camera up a little bit. I bumped it. Here we go. Three, two, one. Love that. That's exactly the light that I want. Really, really simple. Really, really gorgeous. So that's just that portrait right there, which I think is fantastic as is, is made with just one flash with an umbrella and using a window as my fill light. So, and I think, honestly, I think it's a really great shot. I think it's a really pretty shot. So you can do some amazing stuff in a, in a really, really small area. Like I said, we're probably working in like a six by six or maybe a seven by seven a square area where just the equipment is. Granted, the room is probably like 12 feet by, I'd say like 12 by eight room. So, but like I said, we're in about a six by six or six by um, seven area, just kind of shooting. So really, really simple stuff. So now I'm gonna actually, let me see if you guys have any questions first before I jump and add in a third, third light really quick. So let's see. I'm a little discombobulated too, because I'm not used to like my cameras. I'm always used to my cameras being in a certain place and my tethering station being in a certain place that I'm like, where is everything at? So I apologize. I'm, I'm trying to move some things around. So like I'm not in your face. So let's do this. Let's see. Cool. Let's see. Let's see. What's up everybody. Hi from Holland. What's up? Um, What's up, Maine? Jennifer in Maine, what's happening? Jess in the house? Moera, what's up, dude? Good to see you. So, um, how am I streaming to Twitter? Uh, I'm streaming through Periscope, which is a Twitter company. So it just shows right up on Twitter. So you can watch now on Twitter. You can watch on Facebook. Oh, other thing that I forgot to warn you guys of. Uh, we're social distancing <laughs> just as much as everybody else is. And uh, which means, and we're upstairs in like prime time, so <laughs> we're gonna have we're gonna have little little ladies and little dudes running around. So um, you can say this is Oliver. Let's we'll say what's up. I say hey. He say hey. Say hi. You prefer not hi. to? Oh, there it is. He's saying hi to you guys. So so there's a, a chance once again. Obviously, the chance is full on that he's here. So we're gonna we might, we might have little dudes running around. Cool, so let's do another shot with the hair light turned on, just so you can kind of see the, the little bit of extra that it's gonna add right from the background, kind of doing a touch more separation of Kate from the background, uh, a little bit more separation of Kate from the background. Uh, it's gonna add a little bit more light onto the background, which is gonna be kind of cool. The nice thing is the light coming from this direction is already filling in and giving some good separation anyway. But this right here is gonna add just a touch more. I think it's gonna polish the shot up. Once again, we're doing this all with A1Xs, so I'm not using anything really, really big. No B10s, none of that stuff. The, the biggest thing that I've got going on here is a, a large umbrella, so pretty simple stuff. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, you, you could have white walls. Granted, that's a that's a good thing to bring up. Let's see, Moira, yeah. So you may have white walls and granted once again you don't have to use a colored backdrop a white wall would be gorgeous too i just happen to have a couple of short rolls of seamless uh, in my basement and the blue one's just the one that i wanted to go with today so you could easily go with a white backdrop the white is gonna is going to affect it but i do think that in the initial shot where we were taken and getting the fill light correct that for the most part we're going to be exposing for light that may be bouncing around the room and stuff like that and what and whatnot. So yes, there are things that you have to pay attention to. I was I was even considering at some point uh, bringing up uh, like little uh, black poster boards and use them as flags, which you could easily do. Uh, it's just once again, I didn't want to overly complicate. <laughs> I didn't want to overly complicate everything that was going on. So so I'm going to. Um, Put, bring Caitlin back right here. We're gonna turn on that hair light and my son is probably gonna rock on this bear right here. So we're gonna do that. Sweet. Um, okay. Super bummed that you had to, super bummed you had to cancel all your shoots, Carl. Hopefully uh, hopefully everything picks back up. I'm glad you guys aren't on lock, uh, lockdown though. So you, you know, you can get out and get some groceries and stuff like that. So sweet. So we're going to kick on my hair light now. Honestly, I kind of already have it set to where I want it anyway. So this is a little bit of cheating. So make sure it's still at six, yeah. So I'm at a, a power level of six. Um, honestly, I just um, 
turned it on when I was in manual mode earlier and just started adjusting the power up until it looked like the way that I wanted it to. So now we can say, oh, and my other little rugrat just came in. So back up a little bit, honey. Thanks. Right here, okay. right here, Caitlin. So three, two, one. So here we go. So here's the sh yay. <laughs> so <laughs> here's here's the shot right here with let's do a side by side. So here's the side by side, just so you can kind of see the little bit of difference in adding something. Oh, you know, let me have you guys not talking to my back. So. Yeah, go tight, go tight, shot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang it. Oh, I almost died, guys. That's what I get for leaning forward. So, the cool thing is, is that they're both beautiful shots. So, if you only have one light, or if you have a couple of lights that you can do this with, you have options. So, the nice thing that you're getting from adding the the hair light in is you're getting this nice little highlight right here on the brim of the hat. You're getting a little bit of a highlight here on the shoulder and a little more separation here on the back. It's also lighting the background a touch more, so it's evening the color out. So, just I think it's it's really cool things. It's just sometimes something that if you have the ability to go the route of a uh, a hair light or something like that, that you you can you can polish the shot up just a little bit. But once again, I think both both lights or both images are really, really beautiful. Really, really simple to achieve. Like I said, you could use a color backdrop if you want to. This would be great with a white wall. I don't have, like behind me right here is like a, a big closet door or else I would show you on uh, my gray wall or something like that. I just don't want to move too much of my furniture. So that's why I've got the seamless up. But on a white wall or whatever painted wall that you may have, it'll look gorgeous. So you have a lot of, a lot of really, really cool options that way without having to do a whole bunch of extra stuff. Uh, and then once again, I just kept it as simple as I could. I went with uh, an A1X here for my main and a large white umbrella. And I have a, an A1X just super clamped up to my light stand. Granted, you don't even have to do any of this stuff. Like I could have, I could have like tried to stick it to the wall with like a, a gorilla pod or something like that, or or just sat it on like a taller piece of furniture if I wanted to. I just didn't have anything in here with me. So uh, hopefully that was some cool information. Let me see if you guys have any questions before we do any type of signing out. Let's see. All right. The first one, yeah, they're they're both they're both very very lovely images. Um it's it's and that's what's so awesome about it. It's a it's this is a really easy setup to achieve a really beautiful image. And like I said, we're in such a small area as far as footprint goes that I think sometimes people and I know I do uh, get caught up in the idea of like, oh, you know, I'd love to have 12 foot ceilings and I'd love to have um, you know, I'd love to be able to space out and boom all these things in and out. Really, making great images isn't, isn't about that. It's about working with what you have, uh, working with the situation that you're currently in. You know, for us, you know, we're inside just like a lot of other people are right now and not, you know, really going out and about and doing stuff. So I think this is a really, really cool thing to realize that it doesn't take much to make great images. Once again, one of the lights that we are using, for, so for the shot, this first shot right here, the fill light that we're using is free. It's the window to this room right here. So anybody can set up with the window. So we have the window set up so it's kind of like a big light source across this way. You can do it however you want to do it. Uh, it you have a lot of flexibility that way. And then just one light source with an umbrella. You, and this is a bounce umbrella. You can go with a shoot through umbrella. If you have a soft box, go the soft box route. It doesn't really matter what modifier you're using. It's just that you're, you're doing it with intention. So let's see. If you guys have any other questions, if not, I'm signing out of this sucker. Um, Miguel, am I using the same power on both um, on both A1s? The answer is no. So, oh, so Miguel, I'm not 100% sure what you're asking about using the same power, so I'm gonna answer it two different ways. Am I using the same power on both A1Xs? No, so this one, based off of where Kate was sitting, and going into the modifier and stuff like that is about two stops brighter than this one. So this is at a power level of eight. This one right here is at a power level of six. Um, so, I apologize. So this one's at a power level of six. So those two are not the same. Uh, hopefully that was the, the, the question that you had for me. Let's see. Yeah, Carl, to, I, I totally understand the color shift thing. I think sometimes, um, I think sometimes people forget that some some of the lesser lesser things. It, it, I always tell people in order, 
you, in order to get something, sometimes you have to give up things. Sometimes in order to get a, a lesser expensive light, you have to give up some color consistency or you might have to give up some flash consistency. So it's just, it, it depends on what works for your budget. And if, you know, Profoto is within your budget, hey, you know, welcome to the dark side. So uh, is that a 41 inch para? So it's a, it's the pro, it's called the Profoto Large. Uh, it is a deep umbrella, so it does actually scoop the light and push it a little bit more forward. The size, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 52 inch. So it's a little, a little over four feet. It, it is 52 inch. That's right, because when we were comparing this one and the four foot octa at 40, obviously 48 inches, that's that's what it was. So you were 52 inch on the the large umbrella. So it is a 52 inch, not not technically parabolic, but it is a deeper umbrella and it scoops and pushes that light forward. Let's see. If that window wasn't there, could you fill with an A1 on camera? Uh, I heard of this approach, curious to take. You totally could do that. The things that you just have to pay attention to, and you know what I can actually do? Uh, which one of these is my Fuji A1? One of these is a Fuji A1, one of these is a Sony A1. So I can switch them out. So let's do it. You wanna see what it looks like filled in with the A1? We shall do that. So let me take my Fuji A1 down. So this one's gonna go top camera for me. And then we're gonna put, I have a, this is my Sony A1 right here. I'm gonna, um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to, um, I'm gonna try to take the window out of the equation completely. So what we're, what we're gonna wind up doing is we're going to, uh, I'm probably gonna change my camera settings a little bit just to kind of knock that out. So sorry, let me get these A1 switched over. So cool. Take my air remote off of my camera. Let's see, here we go. A1 mounted up. So I think the, the, the one of the things that you're gonna find that, that's gonna change the look of the shot a little bit is that now we're, we have a smaller light source coming in as the fill. So it's definitely gonna be harder. Whereas when I was using the windows, the, the size of the windows in the room are pretty big. Therefore, you know, it's gonna be a, a lot softer of a light source. So it's gonna be a little more subtle. This is totally doable with a, a flash on the camera, but it may be one of the situations where you might wanna balance it. So that way, so I'm gonna show you both ways. I'm gonna show you the, the, the flash, the fill bounced, and then I'm gonna show it with you um, direct. So let's do that. So let's, we're gonna go direct first. So let's kick on. Oh yeah, put it back in front of the blue, sorry, yeah, yeah. And then right, come back to your left a little bit. Right there is perfect, perfect, sweet. So let's kick on this A1X. I'm going to shut the main light down just so it's not impeding the shot and we're gonna get the fill flash right. So let me, let me get my shutter speed up to where it's not. There we go. So I've taken the window pretty much totally out of the shot. So here we go. Three. Oh, let's get a let's get a TTL shot with B on three, two, one. Oh, hang on a second. I did them, I did them backwards. I apologize. Hang on one second. I moved I moved everything over, and I forgot that the the groups that I have everything set to are different. So let me just there we go. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Right here, come three, two, one. So that's a TTL shot, just normally direct camera flash. So what I'm going to want to do now is I'm gonna bring that power down. So let's go, I'm gonna flip to manual mode. So that's properly exposed. So I'm gonna come two stops back. So let's go down, two stops. So this, was, this is what that fill light would look like just as a two stop underexposed fill flash, right? Cool, sweet. So let's kick on the, the main light now. Alrighty, and so let's see where we're at. Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just go back up to eight because that's where we were earlier. With the other things, so it should be relatively into the ballpark. So let's see what happens. So here is on camera as your fill. So this. So these are the things that you're gonna have to start to kind of play with and things that can happen. So because it's a little bit more of a direct flash, and granted, I, I definitely am gonna need some more on my main. Let's go up another. Stop. Let's see what happens real fast. So we go. It's starting to look 
pretty, it's starting to look more like the original shot. But the thing that you're gonna obviously see is the shadow in the background that you're getting from the on-camera flash. I could flip up and go to a vertical, um, a, a horizontal shot, and that would get that light up a little bit higher, and that would look better, but it's not necessarily giving me exactly what I want. So, <laughs> James Madison late waking up from now. Yeah, we're gonna actually do the whole thing over again. So, so everybody just turn everything off, turn it back on, we're, we'll be back live in just a second. <laughs> so, um, so let's do the same thing now. Hey buddy. So we're gonna do the same thing now, only I'm gonna back my face out of the way. Actually, I have a white blind right here. I'm going to lower this white blind. There we go. I'm gonna lower this white blind. I'm going to use this as the thing that I bounce my flash off of. So hopefully this will start, we'll start getting back into the realm of everything we need. So let's go A, let's take that down two stops, because I want that two stops different than my main. And then here we go. So here's the TTL shot of everything. Three, two, one. Not bad. So that's the same shot just there. So essentially just did the exact same thing. So here, hopefully that was, that was awesome for you, you guys to see that. So with the direct, you have the, you have the chance of that shadow being a lot more harsh, especially coming off the side because it's such a direct and pointed light source. But all I did was I took and I flipped the light and hit the, uh, the blind that was behind me or a curtain or whatever you might have. And it gave me, here, here we go. So let's, let's compare the three. So here was, and, and we're gonna look at the one with no hair light because obviously the hair light's not turned on in this one. So there you go. So you have this shot right here, which is the shot where we were using the windows as our, uh, our fill light with the umbrella as our main right here. And then this is when we started using the A1X pointed directly at the subject as the fill. So still a lot of the same look and feel as the the previous shot, but one of the downsides is you're gonna have to control this shadow right here. Uh, it's definitely gonna be more pronounced too, just because once again, I'm shooting this shot vertically and my A1 is down into the side. So it's actually, it's lighting her right here. It's like cutting right across her. So, and then all I did was I flipped the A1 X head backwards into a blind that I had set there. And once again, remember, I set the camera settings to where the other two windows that are open right now do not affect the shot whatsoever. So we just bounced that flash right back into the blind and we got pretty much the exact same setup. So that just goes to show you, you don't necessarily have to have an additional standard, try to figure out where you wanna mount this stuff. You could go, or you, I mean, if you just have two A1s and you don't have an air remote, you can easily do flash on camera, just bounce it as your fill into something a little bit larger, like I did into the blind. I'm sure that we also got some miscellaneous hitting the the, the white ceilings that I have in here and, and kind of smooth that out some more too. But I think that's actually kind of cool. So hopefully that was cool information for you there. Let's see. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I definitely uh, I lost track where I'm at. Here we go, let's see. Um, oh, it was Ben, yeah, Ben. So hopefully that was some good information for you, Ben. What am I setting, Valentina, what are my settings? So on my camera, I'm rolling, so with that last shot, uh, which is this one right here, this last shot with the A1 on camera, I'm rolling uh, 250th of a second, F8 at ISO 160. So uh, I've got the, I'm shooting F8, power level, um, I'm at full power on this A1X here, and my A1X was on camera, my guess is probably also getting, oh no, it's two stops down. So it's at eight. So it's it's holding the ratio that I, I need anyway. So, but F8, one 250th of a second, ISO 160, full power on this A1X into the umbrella, and then uh, two stops down at a uh, power level of eight on that A1X. Hopefully that was, that was awesome. So uh, let's see. With the hair light, it looks like it's causing a weird shadow on her jeans. Oh, listen, let me go back and look. Let me go back and check that one out with the hair light. Weird shadow on her jeans. Yeah, probably it's in, and what you're probably catching this weird shadow right here is just, just hitting the brim of the hat and, um, and casting that shadow down. I could probably fix that with light placement, honestly. Uh, 
I just am trying to, you know, work with with that stuff right there but you're totally right good catch on the jeans it's it's definitely the brim of the hat at least the round shape is is looking like that so it, it probably just me finessing the light a little bit more just to to either mitigate the shadow or move the shadow a little bit like further down the leg possibly uh just to keep it out of the frame of the shot but good very 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 good catch i didn't even see that at all very awesome let's see if you guys have any other questions what white balance am I using? Honestly, I'm probably doing the terrible thing and using auto white balance. Let's see. Where are we at in the white? No, no, I was wrong. I'm not using white auto white balance. So my white balance is set to 6300 Kelvin. So I'm shooting just a touch warmer than daylight uh, just to kind of give me those warmer tones that I like. Uh, what, you, what you'll find is that Pro Photo flashes shoot kind of in the 59 to 60. I don't, I don't ever, it, they're not 5,600. I think everyone's always assumed that Profoto lights are 5,600. They're consistently a little bit above uh, 5,900. So just for something for you to know for future reference, but I, I've uh, been finding myself wanting to shoot a touch warmer here recently. So I'm at 6,300 uh, custom Kelvin on the camera. Sweet. Um, JDP, I thought you liked that blue, man. You guys got me, you guys got me amped on the blue. I got to break the red out. I, I bought a, I bought a really awesome flame red, uh, which is pretty dark. It's actually not as like red as you think. We'll use it for another time. I'll shut up. Um, is it better to go with a smaller light like an A1 in a tight space versus B10? I don't necessarily know that the B10, uh, I don't think that I'm necessarily saving any room with the A1X. Honestly, the B10 might be nice in this situation, especially now if I start trying to push it anymore. Uh, this A1X is now, you know, tapped out. It's at full power, which is fine because the image came out great. It's a beautiful shot. But, you know, if I needed a little bit more juice, maybe I need to go to F16 to try to get some more of the, like, maybe there's some messy stuff in the in the room that I need to try to get out and, and go to a, um, you know, a close down a little bit more. Then, yeah, the B-Tone would be nice. I There's no, the only reason I kind of went with A1s is I was trying to keep things tiny, but the B-10 is pretty small. You could do all the stuff with the B-10. You could do it, honestly, you could probably do, you could probably make some really, really cool images with the C1 Plus. If you guys have ever seen that little sucker, um, you, I just, I would, I was thinking that maybe next week I would do something with the C1 Plus, just uh, maybe some self-portrait type stuff. So we'll see, we'll see how we're feeling. Um, but you have a lot of options. But yeah, the B10 would be great here. Uh, absolutely. I, I mean, crap, a Pro 10 would be awesome here. It's just really about um, trying to show that you can do tiny things in tiny spots. So let's see. Um, exact, Clark, exactly. You don't need a lot of gear to, to make amazing images and you don't need a lot of space for it too. You don't need this massive, you don't need a massive studio space. Yes. Are they awesome? And they give you some flexibility? hundred percent. I will not even act like they have no purpose. They are the best. Uh, but I think sometimes, and I know that I do myself get caught up in the idea of like the grand of something that sometimes if you just realize that like I can scale back a touch and shoot something in my son's nursery <laughs> with a cool backdrop and a couple of lights you just using the things that I already have like these windows you can do some cool stuff so Carl dude thank you so much um next week so Carl if this is the first time we were catching it I do this every week around 12 12 30 uh, depending on technical difficulties. <laughs> so, but yeah, every Saturday, every Saturday noonish is, uh, is where we go with it. So, uh, honestly today I had to run ethernet cable this morning to this room. So, but, uh, we made it happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was, uh, I was doing some telecom work before we were doing all this other stuff. So, uh, oh, oh, let's see. Um, B10 with umbrella outside, uh, would be other you want to see the B10 with an umbrella outside in a video. Jacob, expand on what it is that you're asking for. I'll do it. I'll, I love doing all this kind of stuff. So, um, but hopefully this is some cool information. Once again, the idea is just to show you that, especially in, in this kind of crazy time right now where a lot of us are kind of cooped up, we're inside uh, and, and we may feel uninspired, that you still have options to do cool things and kind of keep those creative juices flowing. Heck, maybe right now is a good time to start like, you know, flexing some creative, you know, uh, some personal works muscles, you know? Uh, and, and who knows, you, you finding that in your exploration of stuff with the time that you have, 
that you might find a new look that you really like, something that really kind of defines your personal style, which I think is neat. So you do have a lot of uh, a lot of cool stuff. So hopefully that was awesome for you guys. I know I, I honestly kind of had a blast doing this. Uh, it's once again, stripping all this stuff down and really seeing what you can do in minimal space with minimal stuff is pretty awesome. And then the fact that you guys, you know, have great ideas and you're like, hey, let's try with the A1 on top of the camera instead of, you know, using the big window. That's dynamite. I wasn't even thinking on that level, uh, honestly, at that point. So it just goes to show you that you may not have a gigantic bank of windows like I have right now. You know, am I fortunate in having that? Totally. But hopefully you, you, you do have a window um, or you have something like a curtain or a piece of, a white bed sheet. I could have hung a white bed sheet right there, pop that sucker off would have been great. So it's just really working with what it is that you have to make great images. So let's see. Moera, thank you so much. Um, red and green are the local school colors. Hey, I got the red downstairs. We'll break it out next week, hopefully. So in the meantime, I hope you guys have an, oh, let's see. Um, let's see. Thanks, Chris. I've always shot pro photos at 56, but going to try 59. Yeah, give it a shot. I think you might like it. Um, like I said, I'm at 63 and, and it, it's just, it adds a, a tone that I just really, really love. So, but once again, thank you so much for coming in and kicking it with me. Hopefully you guys are staying super safe. Uh, you're staying six feet away from each other. She's already too close to me. So, um, I'm going to make her get six feet further away from me. And, um, hopefully you guys are staying, staying healthy. And in the meantime, do some cool stuff, stay super safe. We'll see you next week. Peace out.